Uh, just a quick uh, kind of background on, on the event. Uh, it, was, it was an idea that I had a couple years ago when I was in Green Bay uh, and, and had you know, gotten final approval, approval to do it and ended up, you know, COVID hit. And then um, my untimely departure from there also had a little, little something to do with, with, with not getting it done. But uh, it's just something that, you know, understanding the, the, the current landscape, uh, even though that we're first year of a program and, and trying to get something like this up and running, you know, is difficult when, when we're, we're in year one, year one, there's so much to do, you know, that first spring, I mean, the, the world's turning a little bit faster. It, I just felt it was too important uh, to not try to get this this uh, up and running. So the the purpose of the event, it's, it's uh, Kevin already mentioned it, flew in last night, uh, all day today, all day tomorrow, and then p uh, part of the day on Friday. Uh, you know, we have 12 candidates, and it's it's uh, really a chance for us to get exposed to them from the standpoint of how do they carry themselves, how do they, they're going to present to us, we're going to do mock interviews, uh, film everything, give them feedback on it. Uh, they get a chance to be in our be in our meetings. You know, we'll talk to them as well. Kind of, you know, here's you know, understanding the the NFL culture and expectations and uh, you know, those those types of things, which I think are are uh, real important. But the the real basic premise of the program is really to 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 feed uh, you know the candidate pool for the NFL from the bottom up. Uh, I don't I don't think there's enough. Uh, there's enough emphasis placed on the on the entry level jobs, and that's why the the target for these candidates were were really they weren't college position coaches. These are these are guys that are QCs, that are analysts, that are that are uh, graduate assistants, uh, because th those are the, those are the the really the, on a lot of NFL staffs. That's that's the glue, and people don't realize how important those those positions are. Uh, and I do think this establishes a little bit of a different niche than the than the Bill Walsh Fellowship Program because a lot of those jobs typically, those opportunities typically go to college position coaches or college coordinators, uh, and especially now that just the way that college coaching salaries have have skyrocketed, it, it's really difficult to to have somebody from that program to take that biggest step back financially to get into the league at a, at an entry level position. Uh, and the, and the one thing that's that's uh, very clear is is those types of positions, uh, NFL QCs, that when there's turnover on a staff, when somebody moves, you know th those are great opportunities for for those coaches because typically they're, you know they've they've earned you know they they've they know this system intimately. So if I'm a coach and I go somewhere else and I want to take somebody that knows that system, a lot of times I'm not going to be able to to take coaches full time assistant coaches from the staff that I'm leaving. You know, they're they're going to get they're going to get blocked. That's I mean, that, that's very common. But typically, the young coaches aren't going to get blocked. You know, those entry level positions aren't going to get blocked because usually they're leaving to take some form of promotion. Uh, and then the other opportunity is when there is movement on a staff that that everybody wants to promote from within first. So you know, those you've you've been around those guys. You know they're you know they're loyal. You know they're you know their their work ethic. Uh, so I, I just think it, it's it's. Be, to be able to, to to increase the pipeline for guys in in um, for candidates in that in those roles, I, I just think was was something that that uh, that was missing. So uh, you know, hopefully we we uh, feel like we've got it uh, mapped out pretty good. I'm sure there'll be some glitches in in uh, in year one, but uh, ultimately, I'd love to be able to provide a template for the rest of the league because I just think there's so much. I mean, the hardest part with this was telling guys no, telling candidates no. Uh, that it was uh, just so many. I could have 40 or 50 in here e easily that the all would have been uh, qualified to do it. So you know, we cast a large net. We, we, we uh, leaned heavily on our coaching staff and their very trusted college contacts uh, in, in, uh, in, in finding the names. They submitted a portfolio, which was evaluated. Uh, the next step uh, to, to narrow the list down were, were Zoom interviews. Uh, and we were able to to uh, to get our list down that way. But in 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 the future, uh, and I've already made the connections. I'd love to be able to uh, you know have a relationship with the with the Fritz Pollard Alliance, uh, the league office, just to maintain a list of candidates. Uh, and I also think there needs to be an emphasis on some of the positions where you, where that where you feel like the the league might be a little bit light in diverse candidates, offensive line, quarterback. 
you know, there was a, there was a lot of defensive uh, uh, candidates to choose from, but but I do think moving forward that there'll be more of a more of an emphasis placed on that. Uh, I've always had a very special place um, in my heart for for QC coaches because I, I just think ultimately they make the best coaches because when you break down film when you do those jobs, uh, I mean you learn the game. So if, if I'm a if I'm a defensive back coach, that's my that's my specialty. But I, I still have to learn. And when I break film down, I got to know what the, I got to know how things are being blocked. I got to know what the protection is. I got to know what the route combinations are. So you you learn really the whole game with you know without realizing how much you're how much you're soaking in. And typically the the QC coaches that excel are are, are very good with uh, with technology. And uh, I think those those coaches are the ones that are going to progress faster in the league because uh, you know anytime that you have a, a guy that can make your meetings make, uh, make the learning for the players more efficient uh, make your meetings more efficient uh, you know that's that's uh, that's always a plus so I, I just felt a bit it, it um, you know it made too much sense and uh, like I said we're this morning we're off off to a good start but uh, you know we'll uh, you know we'll, we'll see how it wraps up so these guys are all college coaches but kind of on the on the graduate assistant level yes. of colleges, and so are they all different kinds of colleges, or mostly yeah, I mean, like uh, Division One, Florida A and M, okay, you know HBCU, and then it's, then it's a lot of you know uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, you know Northern Arizona. Uh, uh, a female candidate is from uh, Oberlin College in uh, in Ohio, so it, it it is a very diverse group uh, in in uh, in that sense. What will happen with them on the other side of this? So they'll go through that this week, and then do they maintain contact? Or is that up to them to maintain contact, or how will that kind well, of? I, I just think you're you're just building relationships. That that uh, you know, there's no there's no promise of anything at the end of this. But I just think our exposure to them and 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 making them better when we you get a sense that somebody has uh, the the aptitude to excel at what we would ask them to do. Uh, you know, it's it's in those. It's very difficult. That's so competitive. It's very difficult to uh, to find candidates. And that way, when you when you establish that list, you know the the league uh, coaching. It's it's such a fraternity. I mean, if somebody called me up at the end of this and said, "Hey, we're looking for a guy that can work with the DBs," I I would jump at the opportunity to to uh, to re to recommend it. This isn't like we're going to look to be. You know, we're making this very public. We're not hoarding coaches. I mean, this is one where it's an opportunity for them, not just for here, uh, but when when coaches when there is transition and coaches leave, or just when they they ask us for recommendations. But the, the ultimate goal would be to to uh, you know to provide that template and have have uh, have some other teams do it, and and just um, you know, like I said, widen that pipeline. Uh, thinking about this when you were with the Packers a few years ago, what sort of how where would you trace your inspiration to? Wanted to see something like this. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just over time, just it con continually hearing about the, the whole, the you know about the lack of coordinators and the, and the lack of you know diversity in the in the head coaching ranks. And, and I always felt like it, it it needs to come from you know it's difficult when when you try to pull somebody in, you know at a at a at a job where they haven't you know grown from within. I mean this is. This is going to take time. I mean, I, I might, might, I might be sitting on a beach somewhere drinking a margarita, looking, looking back at the, at the being proud of the, the candidates from this class that, that that make it, and hopefully future classes. But I, I just think it's something that's that, that's more, you know, a, a grassroots type thing that uh, will grow over time. So, it, yeah, it just kind of just listening, and, and we had gone through a hiring process for for QC candidates in, in Green Bay, and really did a similar process where, where uh, uh, Ryan Downard, who's the safety coach there, he and I did a lot of research on coaches and then uh, you guys submitted portfolios and then we, we interviewed them on Zoom. It was really the same process and, and found two really good QCs to hire, uh, one of which is very quickly, I mean, it's Christian Parker. He's now with the, with the Denver Broncos, very quickly was promoted to, to being a position coach. I mean, he's the perfect you know, example of success from something like this, so it's uh, it's just something that, that the more I thought about it, the more it made sense, just for those for for the entry level jobs. Whereas a lot of times those are overlooked. 
talk about this being a template for other teams. Have you talked to coaching friends around the league that are interested in maybe kind of seeing how your first year goes with this and maybe incorporating it with their organization? Yeah, there, I mean, there were there were coaches that were aware even before we 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 got it up and running. Guys that I've worked with before or have talked to, and even you know, guys in college that that uh, are interested in just kind of just to see how it goes. And and a lot of the guys at other places, I once we put together kind of the the rough outline for it, and and was able to to, to bounce it off and and uh, you know get some get some real real constructive feedback and. And uh, you know, hopefully, put together something that's going to be a pretty successful event. The the NFL came up with something I think in March where they wanted every team to have um, a diverse uh, offensive assistant coach, um, sort of on the quality control level. Uh, does the Vikings already have one that in that, or is that could that person come from? Very well, could. So th there's not one yet. No, there. It, but it, correct. It, it uh, and that this gives us the great opportunity to. To uh, to evaluate that, it's not. We it wasn't sold that way as hey, come in, you're you're competing for a position, but but that um, very easily could could morph into that.